Hello everyone, this is Noemi Banki and uh, we are broadcasting from Sydney, Australia exactly at 3 p.m. so in this uh, metaphysics activity about Connie Mendes. So let's start. Okay. We are going to talk about Connie Mendes. She was born on the 11th of April 1898 and 81 years later she disincarnated on the 26th 6th of November 1979. Actually, ex oh, I mean exactly, uh, let me think, 41 years ago. So today is 26th of November, but 41 years ago she was disincarnated. And we are talking about a beautiful, wealthy, short Venezuelan, always elegant, who loved dressing her in jewels. Although she was known as being very funny, making a joke of everything, she was educated, wise like no one else, and had good manners. And the thing is, she, um, let me, she, she used to enjoy playing the piano and the guitar. And even though she could be described as a magical being uh, by people who, who knew the, her, she was completely logical, practical, formal, serious, as well as loved by people for she composed popular music she sang among other great figures to the king of spain and the duchess of alba so basically we are talking about a, a woman i i'm talking from the beginning because maybe you know a little bit about her maybe you don't know at all about her maybe you read some her books or maybe not so for this reason i started from the beginning so so she was ben, she was venezuelan and she uh, grew up in a in a wealthy family uh, her her father was a poet an author as well and well she studied in venezuela but also in the usa for this reason she uh, well she spoke spanish as well as english and other languages and well let me uh, and the thing is she was very very popular uh, and she not only she uh, used to sing around uh, Venezuela but also overseas and well basically she was very famous because she made uh, her own she wrote her own songs and well was popular folk romantic and so on so she was very popular. She was like a, um, like a person uh, of TV or something like that. All right. And this is her photo. She with her guitar. Okay, and I, because I cannot, I cannot talk about, you know, she was, uh, she lived for 81 years. So I cannot talk about all her lives. First of all, I don't know because when she passed away, well, within metaphysics, we have some new, for people, some new te terminology. When we say she disincarnated, what does it mean? Okay, I want to clarify. This means that she didn't pass away or she didn't die. What happened is you transform your state. Oh, uh, she didn't have any, any more body. So this is the kind of thing like when we say, we don't say 
she passed away or she died. We said she disincarnated. Okay, so <laughs> coming back, when she disincarnated in 1979, I didn't was born. I wasn't, I, sorry, I wasn't born. So I didn't meet her, but I read uh, about her from uh, Ruben Cedeno. And for this reason, um, I know about her. Everything I know about her is because of him. And well, he told us that she was a very, very, a very popular singer. And everyone, when she played the guitar uh, on the on the screen on TV, everyone loved her songs. And well, I want to speak about some situations in her life. So for this reason, now I will talk about this this uh, episode of her life. So as I said before. Uh, she was between, you know, Venezuela and the United States of America. So in that case, she was in New York. And this was, the socioeconomic situation was very delicate. Uh, the World War II had begun. So we are talking about 19, in the 40s, something like that. So Connie decided to take a cargo boat to leave the country and return to Venezuela. But she wasn't alone. Other people were in the same boat, including Mr. and Mrs. Pichier. And let me tell you, because uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't know. I want to clarify. It wasn't uh, like a commercial boat. It was like, like an emergency boat. The situation was very, very stressful at that time. So she had some contact and she, she said, okay, I want to go back to Venezuela. And she was in this boat with other people as well. But this, it wasn't a commercial boat, it was some special, like an emergency boat. Okay, let's go on with this story. Okay, so they spent a week on ship unable to leave Manhattan Bay because a submarine was stalking them with the intention of sinking their boat. Like eight others that had been going to different parts of the world. So, I mean, as the same as uh, this boat, where uh, Connie Mendes, uh, in which Connie Mendes was, okay, was another, there were like almost nine uh, boats, nine, nine ships in the same condition, to different destinations, different parts of the world. The one of her, she, they were, they was going to Venezuela. Okay, so finally, the ship started sailing. So they started the uh, the trip but it only sailed during the day because the engines were stopped and all the lights were off at night so can you imagine that a trip from the the from new york to uh, venezuela take a, a certain period of time but this ship was well, first of all, she, they spent almost one week unable to move. So they were in the, in the boat, but unable to move because someone they didn't know where were waiting to sink the boat. You know, you know what I mean? To kill them. Okay. It was very serious, the condition. I want to explain that this was a very serious situation. The scenario was terrible. Okay. So. Uh, so they sailing during the day, no, no, very quiet, but during the night they stop everything, light, injures, any kind of mm, noise, everything stop 
they are they keep very quiet and well decided what they have to do let's go on with this story while the atmosphere on the ship was totally uncertain and stressful as you can imagine mr P uh, sorry mrs peter was singing with the sailors and seemed very happy like ah, ha, 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 can, uh, singing to, uh, with everyone and can you imagine everyone was frightened scared sad they didn't know where they going to die or not and Connie, Connie Mendes couldn't be quiet anymore and asked Mrs. Peter about her behavior. So basically what she said was something like, um, so she, I want to act a little bit so you can see what's, what's going on. So she was a short woman, a uh, short woman, and she went to this lady, Mrs. Peter, like she was, ha ah, ha ha very relaxing very like she was this lady was like on holiday and everyone else was Ooh, what's going on what's happened so connie went to her and took so from this part of the blues the one the, the, the clothes she wore and took at her and said how it's possible that we are in a war and you are dancing here like nothing is happening don't you know that at any moment a submarine could sink us? So, in other words, like, are you crazy? <laughs> you know, and Mrs. Peter answered to her, nothing will happen to us. And Connie said, why? You know, logically it was, well, why? And Mrs. Peter answered, because God is with us. And Connie Connie answered, ah, all right. And why isn't God with all the soldiers that are in war, in the war, so they are not killed? This is what the logical. And Mrs. Peter answered to her, okay, Connie, look at this. Since they don't know that they are with God, they don't have his protection and God acts through consciousness and that's it so Connie went back to her you know to her place and stay uh, almost with everyone else like everyone else like you know waiting frightening so I know I'm guessing like someone praying or something like that, like you are in a difficult situation, you always uh, look for help and so on. So what's happened is finally the cargo boat moored in the Puerto Cabello in the Venezuelan state of Carabobo. So basically you can see here the map the the trip so they started from new york to remember the paramata bay manhattan bay sorry and paramata is here <laughs> in Semino. um the, from new york to uh, carabobo to venezuela so when they arrive to venezuela and well all the people were very happy the the world were crowdly people around there so yeah like it wasn't like normal you know like yeah well some uh, some family can hunt here and say hello to you but everyone's like so excited so connie asked someone i say what's going on what's happened and this person said to her it's because you don't know but from one out of nine boats arrived safely. The rest were sinked. Sunk. Oh. Oh. So basically the rest of the rest of the boat were died except them their boat. So 
what she do, what she did at that time. She looked around, and when she saw the lady, this lady, Lady Peter, she went to her again, and the same situation again. She took her from the blue Sahira, like they said. Okay, tell me, what do you know? Because we are safe because of you. And Mrs. Peter said, metaphysics. And Connie said, I want to learn metaphysics. And she said, okay, I will give you this. And she gave uh, Lady Peter, uh, gave to Connie Mendes a pamphlet uh, about the golden key by Emmett Fox. So, and well, this is the image of Emmett Fox picture. Okay, and what is about this, the golden key? Okay, let's read it. All you must do is stop thinking about the difficulty and think about God or a divine virtue instead. So you don't have to think about any, any problem. So, and we don't say problem, it's an issue. And this is the golden key, the golden rule. If you do nothing more than this, the difficulty, any issue, whatever it, ha it may be, will soon disappear. Okay, so let's see some examples. Let's the let's for example in a situation in life in where where in which you are upset, sad, uh, lack of energy or whatever happened to you, okay. You can say you can decree I am enthusiastic. Is you know remember you have to go to the opposite, go the opposite side of this difficulty so move away okay another example let's see for example you are in a situation where you don't know what you have to do or what's going on and you need to figure it out okay so the attitude is i am intelligent and what i mean this attitude is like okay i am intelligent is like okay i can i can say the decree but also uh, looking for help or research, uh, seek for um, any information like I need or whatever, whatsoever, doesn't matter, but you need to act, to do something. Don't cross your arms. Or what's happened here, like you are in a situation uh, in which, okay, you don't talk with someone or you are, as you are upset with someone or someone is upset with you or whatever happened, or you are um, angry, uh, so you could be also disappointed, or whatever, well, you can change the situation, you can go to the opposite side, saying, decreeing this, I am love in this situation, and try, don't believe me, try to do this, Okay, what's happening in that, in that situation? One day you uh, wake up, okay, go to the toilet and you look at the mirror yourself and you don't like your hair, your eyes, your mouth, your teeth, your shoulders, your skin, uh, and so on, so on, so on. Okay, so what you have to do is change the attitude and say, I am radiant today. Okay, yes, something like I'm beautiful. <laughs> something like that. In any situation in which you need um, help, uh, well, it doesn't matter if you have to go to the hospital or uh, any, any condition, you don't have to think about the difficulty. Remember, the key, the, the rule is very is easy, it's simple. Don't think about the issue. Instead, Think of, I am healthy, the decree. Another example, you look your wallet, you look at your wallet, you look at your uh, bank account, 
at what you see is this image. Okay, don't think about the difficulty. Think instead, think of I am wealthy. My world has everything I need. And I'm talking here of money, but can be different things. Whatever, whatever you need. Sometimes you have the money, but you need, you know, like you need the shop or you need some specific thing. Okay, so. And another example is, uh, I think you can, you can guess by the image, uh, the need of forgiveness. And could be for, uh, to someone, to forgive someone or to, to forgive yourself. So for this reason, I forgive. And I forgive means, the attitude means that, okay, don't think about the, the, the difficulty. Don't think about the issue. Don't repeat, don't talk with your friends, don't talk anymore about this issue. So stop thinking about that. And instead you, uh, you can think uh, of, okay, I forgive. I can, I forgive you if you think like the other person harm you, but also you can, uh, you can say, I forgive myself. And mostly, most of the time, people around you are unable to harm you because the only thing in the world that can get you is or reach you is your own uh, feelings. So most of the time is what you have to forgive is yourself. And by the way, you can forgive yourself. Saying simply like that, I forgive myself for this and that's it. So the rule is very easy. What's happened? Connie Mendes read this pamphlet and she practiced, she practiced for almost seven years, something like that, only with this, this piece of paper, and she solved all her issues, all her, what do we call problem, but problem doesn't exist, we don't use pro the, the word problem. So, what's happened next? Well, she met in this building, again in New York, her teacher, Emmett Fox. Uh, I don't know if you recognize, but this is the Carnegie Hall, uh, Carnegie Hall in New York. So next to the 7th Avenue, near to them. Um, so she went there, she was walking on the street and she she saw a sign like um, there, were, there will be um, um, an activity with Emmett Fox and she went straight away. And from that day, well, she start, started with him and she, well, she studied with Emmett Fox. He, he was her teacher. So Connie, Connie Mendes, became the first Spanish speaker to, put, uh, to politicize the teachings of Master Saint Germain and the new era, making the term metaphysics popular. So, as I said before, she uh, spoke Spanish as well as English. And she started this information, she started with Emmett Fox. And Emmett Fox was an Irish man who was living at that time in the US. So all the information was in English. But she, she decided to translate all this information into Spanish. And for this reason, actually, because of her, we are, we are now talking, we are sitting right now here talking about that. So it's a very, very, so she changed basically a lot of things. She, this person changed a lot. And because if she hadn't translated 
this is teaching into Spanish, we wouldn't be here. Simple like that. So, in 1970, the foundation, the Sonderman Brotherhood, was legalized to group all metaphysics students. So, Connie wrote her books, published them, and consolidated her first metaphysics group in Caracas. She started uh, this teaching with her friends, and she started working not alone, uh, with a group of people who collaborate with her. As we can see here, uh, Mrs. Katiuska Cordido became Connie's private secretary and assistant in metaphysical management, collaborating with her in the first translation into Spanish of the Golden Book by Master Sondermann. So basically what they, they did was um, Connie was reading the book and she was reading in uh, the book, of course, the book was in English and she read uh, the book, she was translating into Spanish and Katiuska was typing the, all what Connie said and then they make this, this book like, and they published and was, it, once it was published, so they spread this information uh, around the students, of course. So, and, and uh, okay, and then okay, we can we have here a picture with uh, both of her, both of uh, uh, both of them. Katiuska is the lady with pants uh, on the um, left side, and Connie Mendes. Connie Mendes is uh, the lady with the, uh, with the dress and Katiuska Cordido. Okay, so another person, another student was Mrs. Ana Mercedes Azuaje de Rugeles, was an academic composer, author, and music teacher who wrote the hymn to Master Sonderman, whose lyric was based on the book Daily Meditations by Thomas Prince. So as you see, uh, this person were collaborating, uh, collaborated to with the metaphysics, and here we can see a picture of um, Mrs. Ana Mercedes Azuaje de Rugeles with Sir Ruben Cedeño, Baron of Luberty, and well, Sir Ruben Cedeño, Baron of Luberty, composed the anthem of metaphysics, I am perfect, yo soy perfecto, created the logo of metaphysics and elaborated the first trade site of metaphysical pedagogy called Metaphysical Didact Guide, establishing the levels of instruction which is still used by the facilitators nowadays. So, let me explain a little bit about that. At that time, well, Connie Mendes and all her friends, you know, like they were almost adults, so adults, and the, the youngest, uh, with only 17 years old, 17 years old, yes, he uh, was Ruben Cedeño. So for this reason, he is these days the only person who still who is still working uh, with uh, in the upgrading of this teaching. And as I said before, he, the first thing he did was a guy. Why? Because he told us that once they were uh, traveling uh, to uh, a metaphysical, metaphysics activity and they were talking about, okay, well, so what are you going to talk about today? And one said, okay, I'm going to talk about the inner self. And the other, okay, I'm going to talk about the uh, universal principles. And, but they didn't have any, any guide or any, anything like that. So a, any framework or any syllabus, anything. <laughs> and well, what's at that time. So Ruben Cedeño thought, 
okay? We need a guide. We need something so we can uh, follow. And for this reason, we uh, nowadays we have the basics level, basic level with pillars of metaphysics, uh, the seven rays, uh, um, advanced metaphysics, and um, uh, metaphysics principles. So, and then we have another level which is esotericism, and then another level which is Buddha Dharma, and then another level which is Krishna Dharma, and so on, so on, so on. So, a lot, a lot of things that they are organized pedagogically, and it's very helpful. And this happened. So, think about we are talking about 50 each years ago. And at that time, the group was, you know, a small. The students uh, were maybe 20 or something like that and in Caracas. But then the group started uh, increasing and the teaching was spread, spread around not only in Caracas, Venezuela, but all around Venezuela and the countries uh, around Venezuela, like Peru or um, Panama, Bol Colombia, Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, and so on, so on, so on. And nowadays, this teaching is spread around the world because there are millions of students of metaphysics who are based because of this, because of the work of this lady, Connie Mendes, and started with this. So, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. Well, we said that uh, see Ruben Cedeño, he um, he created the logos of the logo of metaphysics, and this is what you are seeing. The logos of metaphysics is called Trisignia, because it is composed of three signs. So we have the wheel of teaching, the Maltese cross, and the heart with the three, uh, threefold flame. So what does it mean? So the, the wheel of teaching was taught by Lord Gautama Buddha and is, uh, is about the eight positive attitudes, like positive thinking, positive speech, positive action, positive livelihood, positive observation, positive meditation, positive understanding, and positive effort. So, uh, what's happened here is um, the first attitude, the first thing to do is think positive about yourself, about your job, about your partner, about your family, about your neighborhood, about your country, about your uh, government about the world. Think positive. Be positive. But uh, how can I say? It's not like okay, be positive and you will be positive. It's you know, it's an attitude. So because the goal of this activity is Connie Mendes, I cannot talk about or explain a little bit uh, about these eight uh, attitudes because. Actually, I I will I should ex I should spend at least one hour talking about that, but it's not the objective. So roughly, I want to explain a little bit of these big things. So what, the way as you think, you talk, of course, and this is related to what you do, and also your livelihood. So don't uh, do for a living like uh, kill animals or harm people or something like that. An observation, meditation, and understanding means that, okay, so have time to uh, perceive uh, your around, so your mental process, your emotions, your, mm, your like, uh, your vitality, and your, your attitude, basically. This is a positive meditation, because meditation in a lake or meditation in a flower doesn't make any sense, so you will not change anything about that if you do that. So you, positive meditation is, okay, look at yourself, be honest with yourself, be serious with yourself and see that your mistakes are uh, what you have to uh, fix uh, within you. And of course, this 
uh, must uh, be with a positive effort so you need to like for example forgive yourself anytime you made a mistake and forgive others if you feel like others can harm you but it's impossible as i said anyway so all these things uh, is about the teaching of will uh, on the other hand we have the second sign which is the modest crosses among other things um, represents for example the four uh, pillars of metaphysics so we have mentalist law mentalism law is the same as positive thinking exactly the same is like um, what you think and you believe you will manifest uh, for example um, think about okay this is easy to understand you will get it but if you think okay I'm not, I, I'm not good enough I can I will not uh, I will not do that it is too difficult for me well forgive for, sorry forget because you will not get it everything is your mind and you can change your mind another thing is the other the other pillar is the inner self and the inner self is the this this, uh, this heart like you can see here uh, this heart with the blue golden and pink flame which means the will the with the will wisdom and love within you you have the power to do whatever you want of course we are talking about positive things the good things and another pillar is the seven rays because god as light is um there there's seven aspects of the totality of life and each aspect has a, a ray or is represented by a ray and for this reason we have blue ray uh, blue ray and golden ray pink ray white ray a green ray, gold ruby ray, and violet ray, and each ray means an uh, an act an, a virtue. So, for example, blue ray means will, faith, enthusiasm. A golden flame means intelligence, and pink ray means love, and white uh, white ray means beauty, and green ray means health and gold ruby gold ruby ray means provision peace and violet ray means transmutation and the fourth pillar of metaphysics is the violet flame itself because the violet flame is a state of consciousness and the day when you can change your consciousness so from for example from the consciousness of uh, being um, like um, what is it? annoying for everything and you are upset for everything and you change to the opposite side to be grateful and yeah so giving thanks for everything you are changing and this is the effect of transmutation but violet flame is a tool that we can use because it's a state of consciousness and the last sign is uh, the heart with the three flames which means the consciousness of will wisdom and love all right so as you see here this logo has a lot of information and this is actually the the metaphysics so this is what represents metaphysics the teaching by Lord Gautama Buddha, the teaching by Saint Germain, um, and the teaching by Master Jesus. All right. So, the first, the first celebration of Thanksgiving among the students of metaphysics was led by Connie Mendes at the Caracas Hilton on November 7, 26, 1969. Again, we are talking about the same day as today. As Connie had studied metaphysics in the United States of America, she got used to celebrating Thanksgiving. And, well, again, I have to repeat, as I said before, 
we are not the, the, the goal of this activity is Corimendes, but at the same time, today we are celebrating Thanksgiving. I will not talk about Thanksgiving. I'm talking about Connie Mendes. But the point is, most of the people, the vast majority of people think like only Thanksgiving happened in the United States of America. And it's, it's not. Connie Mendes learned this, you know, the, 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 the thing about Thanksgiving in the United States because she was there. But she started to do this in Venezuela with a lot, lot of students. And because in metaphysics, we follow this example, her example, we, every year, we celebrate, doesn't matter the, the, the country where you are, we celebrate, or the country where we are, actually, we celebrate Thanksgiving. And it's not only about the arrival of people in the United States, in the land there. It's beyond that. It's, it's the day that you want, is, for example, take into consideration that uh, this day is one day um, among all the year that you will give thanks to you know, like you can every day say thank you for someone to bring you a glass of water or for give you a favor or whatever. So many, many cases that you can say thank you to another person. But particularly this day, we thanks to the life. We thanks for what we have and well, you can imagine that we started this activity talking about what's happened in that boat, uh, I don't know how many years ago, but I think in the 40s, so maybe, I don't know, 60 years ago, 60, maybe 80 years, I don't know, uh, 80 years ago, something like that. Uh, so this story started like that. So this teaching is, is like a treasure. And it's, it's a, a motive to say thank you to the person who gave this teaching to us. And especially, well, Sanat Kumara was the first being to come to Earth to give this teaching. Um, but also uh, Sondraman, the Master Sondraman, and the whole beings of light, and Connie Mendes, this activity is to say thank you to her and Ruben Cedeno, Baron Versi, and all the facilitators around the world, because this teaching is not only uh, spoken in Spanish and English, but also in French, Portuguese, Italian, and so on. So this teaching nowadays is spread around the world and Yes, it's a good it's a good opportunity to say thank you. <laughs> so Thanksgiving is celebrated each year on the fourth Thursday of November. And for the record, there is no need to kill any animal, any any animal at all. We what we can do is make a cake if you want to celebrate it. But not kill animals, please. Okay. And well, we we arrived to this part of uh, Connie Mendes' life, and is yes, is her death. Well, as I said before, we don't say death. She died. She disincarnated. And let me tell you that people mostly they. Mostly people don't like to speak about death. Why? Because they don't understand. They don't understand it. And for this reason, they are afraid of talking about that. But if you understand, you can speak about that freely. So, here the picture is Ruben Cedeno, Baron Lubercy, in the tomb. 
Call him Mendestone. So Ruben was sitting down. So we are talking about night, say, the 26th of November of 1979. So 41 years ago, Ruben was sitting down near the land promontory that had been left from the funeral when he said, I think something must be done here. A metaphysics class or metaphysics activity. Then he stood up and gave the first class or activity that Connie Mendes had explained to him in 1969. Another thing is, let me tell you that Ruben Cedeno started studying, studying metaphysics exactly the same day, one day, so one um, 26th of November um, of 19... Uh, 90, well, I uh, think he started 19... Uh, yes, 69. So the same day he started, uh, the same day, this day, Ruben Cedeno started to study, started studying metaphysics. Connie Mendes, uh, well, was disincarnated. And today we are celebrating Thanksgiving. So, we continue. He put his three, three fingers, like she used to do, and told everyone, each one of you is your inner self, and within your hearts there are three flames with the colors of the Venezuelan flag, blue, yellow, and pink. So, yes, so you said, wow, what's happening? In metaphysics, we are not sad uh, when someone... Oh, in metaphysics, I shouldn't say that because normally, like well, naturally, people shouldn't be sad because someone's died. If we know, you know, if you know, if we understand what death means. But if we don't know what death means, well, happens like any any situation like I'll not talk about today because the topic is Connie Mendes, <laughs> not death or what's happened after death. This is another another uh, activity. So this is not it. As you can see today, after forty one years forty one years later, she disincarnated. She, what she did is still alive and upgraded. So this thing, what she did, not only keep during the time, but also grow up. So with all the work um, by Ruben Cedeno and all uh, other facilitators that makes this uh, nowadays, this uh, metaphysics, uh, make this metaphysics alive. Because in any part in the world that one person is teaching about that, is because it makes metaphysics alive. Okay, so coming back to the day. That day, Ruben, well, he's, he thought, okay, Connie Mendes believed in, in the teaching of Master Sanderman. And from that day, he stood up and he started teaching what he, what she taught and he said okay every person i mean you you have three flames within your within your heart the blue the yellow or golden and the pink as the venezuelan flag blue yellow pink which in venezuelan accent is azul amarillo y colorado I don't know if, if I could say in, in Venezuelan accent, but something like that. And this is the most important thing, her teaching. Her teaching is alive. And this, we are talking about the, the inner self or the Christ, um, the inner Christ. But we don't use so much Christ because this word 
The people have misconceptions about this word. They don't understand that Christ means uh, means um, full of grace and is not related to a person. But anyway, we will call um, like this is the inner self. And the inner self, we are talking about something abstract. This is consciousness. How can you understand when we are, we are talking about consciousness? If consciousness is beyond thought and we don't think, so we don't see a thought. And this is beyond that. So abstract things. But this image can help you, can help your brain to understand. So you can uh, you, if you know this is an uh, and before and after in your life, because within you, your inner self means that you have everything. Your inner self is the source of everything what you need, and not only about material things. You need blood. So your blood, now your heart is beating, your heartbeat is working all the time, even if you are sleeping. Okay, so all the time you have this heartbeat, you know, but it's not physically. So for example, your blood is all around your body and make your cells uh, alive, but give you this in yourself, give you air, give you health, give you uh, faith or will to wake up or to move your body and intelligence. So you want to do something, you want to learn something, you need to study and then you practice and you then you learn in the meantime. And love when you want someone. So everything came through this. And mostly people look outside. I want love and I look outside. I want health and I go outside. I want beauty and I look outside. And it's wrong. This is the wrong way. Go back. Wrong way. You need to go inside because inside within you, your inner self is there is everything you need is there. And this is what we learn with Coney Mendes. And for this reason, we are so grateful to her. And we say, thank you, Connie Mendes. Thank you for your work. Thank you, thank you for what you did. Because change, change a lot. She made, she made a difference. <laughs> so, uh, we have here, to finish this activity, the Thanksgiving prior. Uh, by Ruben Cedeño and I, uh, my person only translated into English, but uh, this activity is, um, is uh, uh, by him. And well, it's because only one day during the year we can say thank you. So if you want to do with me, feel free to do it. Thank you, Father, for my life, which is yours and that of others. Thank you for the light and for the shadows that make me see your immensity. Thank you, Father, for the earth, fire, air and the sea. Thank you for love and for loving, for knowing and having will, for a friend and humanity, for the smile of a child, for mom and dad. Thank you, Father, for the blacks and whites, the mixed race, for the stones, plants, animals, and saints, for the thrones, seraphims, and archangels, faith, hope, and charity, for the challenge and for peace. Thank you, Father, for the words, the expression, and the capability to speak, painting, and lyric, music, sculpture, drama, and architecture. Thank you, Father, for science, medicine, electricity, physics, chemistry, alchemy, and biology. Thank you for the truth. Thank you, Father, for being a Christian, Russian Christian, or Hindu, Jewish, Muslim, or Muslim, metaphysician, or Buddha Dharma student. Thank you, Father, because you know that you exist. 
We know that you exist and we can reach you in many ways. Thank you for everything, from the grain of sand to the solar system, for all the galaxies, for feeling, thinking and being able to create. Thank you, because I can meditate seeing you in every place of my daily walk. Thank you for being able to thank you for everything you give me. And that's it, the end. <laughs> well, thank you very much. This activity is not the end, this whole event, 24 hours. We have more activities and tomorrow at 8 a.m., in the morning, we have an activity with Ruben Cedeno, but you can see like every hour we have activities during this beautiful uh, 24 hours. So thank you very much. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And thank you for joining this activity. See you.